right, here we go. Another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, local realtor here with the Sutton Group Ottawa. And today I am joined with Amanda Stevens from SEO Plus. Amanda, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your making the time for us to come in. Now, if someone is engaging with you guys for the first time, <laughs> what are some of the, the ways that you just kind of lay it out on the table of here's the strategy, here's what we want to do? And what are some of the services that you want them to yeah. essentially look at? Yeah, the first thing we do is, is really just understand their needs and their goals. There's no right or wrong answer. We've had clients come to us who, who maybe have an S, a site that you know is, is not SEO optimized, but their priority is brand awareness. They want to get their, their name mentioned in the OBJ and you know they want to be, apply for awards or, or whatever it might be. And we can we can support it in, in those ways. Obviously, if someone comes to us with something that's just completely out there or we, we don't think is realistic, we'll discuss that. So we don't try to shoehorn people into our favorite service is this, or our most profitable service is this, or we have capacity in this department. It's really understanding what are your needs. Expectation setting is, is critical, and we certainly have you know rejected clients, call it, where just like expectations are misaligned. SEO especially is a long-term game, and as you spoke to earlier, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing maintenance kind of thing. Somebody who expects in 90 days to you know go from the depths of Google to, to number one, a, we know it's not going to happen, certainly not with white hat tactics, and B, it's not going to be a sustainable thing without the right investment behind it. So we really make sure to educate on those fronts, and, and we do work with clients who, who we have alignment with uh, on, on those kinds of things. Other services like paid ads is a great example. You know, with a little bit of setup time, yeah, you can start getting leads and collecting, you know, your desired uh, conversion on paid ads very, very quickly. You pay for it, right? You, if you're Correct. willing to pay a lot more, if your budget, you know, is higher, then certainly you can you can see more leads. So we just try to be really transparent, set expectations correctly, and you know we believe there's usually a place for everyone, uh, you know, yeah. our, in our range of services. But we we don't we we used to everyone probably when they first starts as a company, right? Is like oh anything you need, I can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And you learn the pain of those false promises and and letting people down is so is so much worse than just being upfront with people. And sometimes there there certainly are clients who come to us and say. What you need is just like take a quick SEO course and do it yourself. And that's that's what you need. We had a, we had a client who, um, who who made sort of T-shirts. He was in uh, the States in Las Vegas. He was a student and he was spending sort of his, his only uh, savings that he had. Uh, he, he was investing in, in this project. And we said, please don't. Please don't. Please, you know, take do the recommendations we make. Uh, we c couldn't we just couldn't feel good. Yeah. You know, like we'll, we'll take that and hope it works, you know. No, for sure. And it sounds like. Um... I've heard this before. Actually, a real estate agent had said this to me before. Mm -hmm. He's really well versed in the in the market and this and that. When it comes to expectations, expectations can only be met if they're fully understood on both sides. So, for example, like you and I are, hey, I want this service. This is what's going on. Blah blah blah. And unless I fully understand what my expectations of you and you're understanding what my expectations of me. That's the only way that these expectations. Hundred percent. And on the flip side, understanding of, of our services, right? Because right. some people think I'm doing SEO, therefore I'm going to be at the top of Google, and, and my business is transformed, right? So it really, I, I absolutely love that, and it is like that creating that clarity and that alignment. If you if you don't have that to start with, you will not get it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, going going. So for someone that's looking at like a small business, I want to say, you know, just we'll pick we'll pick at like a coffee shop, for yeah. example that wants to start ranking, that wants to start kind of becoming a little bit more of the, the buzz around the neighborhood and all of that. Mm -hmm. What do you, you know, and then they're just starting from scratch. What yeah. do you guys suggest for them to get going? Yeah. Well, first, I'm not going to make any assumptions. Do you have a website? <laughs> do you have a, a Facebook Zero. page? Okay. So start. let's start with that. Create, create the assets. And the nice thing about starting, you know, at the beginning, you can plan it out. You can have intention behind it. You want to create alignment b between them, right? So you don't want to have you know, a completely different logo on Facebook than you have on LinkedIn. Create yeah, alignment. And for, for folks that are watching, take notes on this one. This okay. Is like <laughs> cheat, cheat yeah, very much. So see, that's the thing. You don't want to assume, right? Yeah. So start and make exactly. sure you have those things. Come to us. No. Um, but uh, so, so start there. Assuming all, all that's in place and, and uh, yeah, I'll speak to optimization a little bit. I think the single most important thing, and it's completely free other than, than your time, is your Google business profile if you're local. Yeah. Because when somebody types, you know, coffee house, Glebe, you have the opportunity to come up. You have the opportunity to be the first result or to show up in the map pack. Uh, and it's visual, it's vivid. It often will show, again, your logo or maybe even, uh, well, after you upload them, items from your menu and, and your location. It's just a really, we talk about real estate location. It is the most 
Uh, it's a gift from Google, honestly. Mm -hmm. So start there. And you can optimize it. Again, just add your logo, your location, your hours. Google offers a lot of additional things that you can do. You can add promos. You can add, mention menus and, and, and all those kinds of things uh, and start curating reviews. Number one, if nothing else exists on the website for you and you're a local business and you have a Google business profile, you're already a, a significant percentage yeah. of the way there. I think you're like almost 80% of the way there yeah. with that because that's the first thing that people do nowadays. Yeah. Google it. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. So I'd say that that's first. I actually would say even more than the website is, is your social profiles. Instagram, if you're a coffee shop, people want to see latte art. They want to see, uh, you know, what you've got going on. Instagram yeah. is, a, is a tremendous platform there. Uh, TikTok uh, is, is great if you're doing more sort of like, hey, here's me making a coffee or check out our today's specials. It, it's really good for that kind of like in the in the moment. Uh, people want authenticity on those platforms. They want to be entertained. Facebook, I know it's maybe a little outdated now, but it still has its value. I think yeah. it still is. Well, there's also that yeah. uh, the cool thing about Meta, I guess, because mm -hmm. of Facebook and Instagram and you know, they're pretty much the same Meta business. If you go on to Meta business, mm -hmm. you're able to actually post it on one and Absolutely. automatically go yeah. on the other. Yes, that's a, again, time-saving uh, innovation. And for business owners who are busy and have a lot going on, those little things actually do really make a difference. And then when it comes to your website, I'll recommend WordPress. Again, I'm a big fan of it. For local small businesses, uh, my team is going to hate me. and I'm so sorry. Wix and Space, Squarespace have their space and, and there's value. You can drag and drop and do all those things. So sorry to, sorry to the team because we have to fix them later. But again, your first ever website, I don't think it's a bad place to start. And then really there's, there's some very, very simple optimizations that you can make, which is, you know, if you come to the, the website and the homepage says home, you are wasting the, the opportunity of that location to say Ottawa Coffee Shop, you know, Ottawa's best latte, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and we should probably be hyper local because we are a large city. Uh, so going into going into Canada or even, you know, Bridalwood coffee shop or something like that uh, to, to really indicate to people, I'm not really willing to go to a coffee shop that's in Orleans, even if it's the, sorry, I'm Canada, even if it's the best one uh, out there. So being a little bit more hyper local can be really valuable. Uh, there's a, whole, a bunch of additional optimizations, but if we're talking like you know, your first hour on the web, get your Google business profile set up, get your uh, your socials, integrate them absolutely right. And on, and on your website, use that title tag because that's what's going to appear uh, in your search results. Even when you're sharing links on, on Facebook and, and uh, other platforms, there's there's something that, that pulls in. Uh, it's called OG tags, but they it basically will, will pull in your, your URL and maybe a little picture that will pull in. So if it says Bridalwoods Coffee Shop, that space and there's also nothing wrong with uh, for example like Linktree oh uh, yeah free website that you can put in you know give it to people with all your links you can even embed embed it into your Google page like as part of the, yes the yeah. yes there, you can yeah which allows that multiple sort of integration one way or another kind of thing if it's coming from you know, if you see it on Facebook, it's there. If you see it, like, it's all in one. Yes. I'm, I'm a big fan of Linktree. My, my aunt is actually, uh, she's a mental health trainer. She has a website for sure. She has uh, all of her social media profiles. But, you know, you make someone go to a website, whether they're on mobile and desktop, they have to scroll, find around, try to see, oh, I didn't know you had, you know, a YouTube page, for example. Linktree is just directly right there. Yeah. Uh, huge fan of, of Linktree. Yeah. yeah. No, fantastic. Uh, so start off with the website, yeah. start off with the Google web page, Google page, I guess, and then all of that stuff sort of link it together. What else would people want to do to like mm -hmm. attract business, bring business to their doorstep? Yeah. I think, again, I think short form video, YouTube shorts, TikTok, whatever it is for, for this specific business type, if we're talking B2B or, or other, other types of SaaS, we, I'd have different recommendations, but people just want to, they want to see your product. They want to see that looks like something I, I would enjoy. They want to get a sense of, you know, the vibe of a coffee shop if it's somewhere I want to go hang out. So the more that you can show uh, just the real experience of it and, and the real products and the staff and, and pricing is important, hours, all of those kinds of things. I think TikTok, YouTube shorts are, are great venues to, to do so. The website for for a coffee shop, again, I just don't think is as much of a priority uh, because people are, are unlikely to, for example, be filling out a contact form that says, hello, can I book a, you know, can I come to your shop? It's just, it's just not. It's just, yeah, exactly. It's just, it's yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. Certainly other types of business, if we talk about real estate, mm -hmm. then, you know, somebody saying, hey, I'm interested in a house in this neighborhood and my budget is this and that. It really it enhances the conversation. Websites are, are, are very, very valuable for that. But if you were to, to go into the website space here, 
Um, this is where, you know, having product pages or service pages. I don't know if your coffee shop is also a bakery. Can I get croissants there? Or is it, I mean, is it just, is it just coffee? Even things like, you know, vegan or sort of, you know, the other types of categories that people may want to consider as, as they're, as they're searching for coffee shops. Uh, do you make cakes? Uh, you know, is it like, like the more you can educate about, you know, do you have coffee, sh- uh, what do you call them? Like, uh, uh, performers, do people perform in this, in this venue? Uh, can I can I ask to prove like live music? Yeah, exactly, music, exactly. Yeah. All of those music, things. Just any music. So this brings me to my next question when it comes to keywords. Yeah. And and you know everybody's all about keywords and like some keywords okay. are more expensive than others when it comes to paid ads. Right. But what does that look like as far as SEO is concerned? Yeah, it's in transition for sure. I think I think there's still value in understanding the root you know keywords for for your for your business real estate, coffee shop, you know, th- those kinds of things. There's there's certainly value. We've shifted more into the notion of, of entities. And this is the idea of it doesn't need to be a specific word. Uh, if we say shoe, a shoe can also be a sneaker. It can also be a loafer. It can be a red loafer. It can be boots for graduation. Like there's so many variants that are that are available. And, you know, we have graphs that, that can show you the the majority of of clicks it's it's something i wish i had the number in my head it's like 90 percent are on we call long tail keywords so short tail shoes red shoes long tail is again red shoes for graduation for a size seven woman or something right that is actually where the majority of clicks come people are usually not searching hotel if they're if they're looking to there there's there's more detail hotel with amenities in downtown Montreal exactly that's a perf- perfect example right so trying to target all of those is kind of impossible or a fool's game as things shift, right? Because we don't talk about Montreal. Some people are like, well, Formula One is happening. And you're like, how do you, how can you predict the, those kinds of things, right? So it's more about optimizing for the entities, the general idea of a hotel, a hotel with amenities, hotels for kids, luxury hotel. These are these a little bit larger uh, concepts that you can then build content around. So keywords, important as a, as a foundation, as a, an alignment uh, setting, but the idea of like going for like one short or 10 short tail keywords doesn't really capture the way that users search, doesn't capture generative AI. People are going to use things like Google Gemini and use ChatGPT and they're not really using keywords. It's conversational. So we want to be a little bit broader than that so that we can capture the specific ways that people search. So I, I don't know if that answers the question, but keywords valuable, yeah. but but shifting. Yeah. From from the sounds of it, it sounds like you're, uh, the keywords are really just very short and that's kind of like the source yeah and then the long tail is more of like the the broad way out here and you want to be kind of in the, somewhere in the middle yeah picture like a tree right so yeah. so you have the the, the root of, of or you know the foundation of, of real estate you've got the, the the trunk the branches and then even the twigs so you want to consider all of those things are going to have different levels yeah. of specificity and you don't necessarily want to be at the like the, the tree leaves you just want to be uh, you it's possible but yeah. it's going to cost you a lot of money because obviously a ton of long tail yeah. keywords. Yes. But with AI and automation, like even on Google these days, most of the bidding, like it used to be when we first started, you would choose a keyword and you say, I'm bidding on this exact keyword. You could have variants and those kinds of things. Nowadays, Google says, give us the general look at your business and we'll send you leads and it'll work out. So so it, even that kind of thing is shifting. So you're able to bid on those really, really specific things without having to instruct it. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as someone you know, brand new in the business. It doesn't matter what type of business. And we're going we're gonna to just lean towards like a hospitality or service type business yeah. where, you know, the average transaction is a little bit more than your coffee shop okay. kind of thing. What are some of the ways for you guys or what are some of the things that you would want to kind of advise them on to start with, to start generating business pretty quick? Yeah, I think it really does come down to that e- the, the expertise, authority, and trust notion, especially if, if we're moving into a more either premium product or, or one that takes a little, well, like, uh, for example, if I need to get uh, a hairband, mine actually broke today, I'm going to walk to the or drive to the nearest drugstore. I'm going to make a purchase. I am not going to think about the brand. I'm not going to do research. I'm not going to do any of this. If I'm looking to buy, you know, a, a riding lawnmower for my, for my house, maybe it's a $5,000 purchase. Yeah. I'm going to be really thoughtful. I'm going to compare vendors. I'm going to look at reviews. I'm going to consult with my friends, all of the, those kinds of things. So you just have to be aware that your consumers are likely, it's a longer sort of conversion cycle, a longer buyer's journey, and that there's there's competition out there. So if your website or your digital presence can have, again, reviews, 
testimonials from from happy customers, trust signals about, you know, for example, other ve- relationships, vendors, you know, logos of, of companies that are, that are trustworthy, those kinds of things, and, and information about the unique value propositions, why I should buy your sort of more premium product over uh, over another one. Those would all be, I think, things that are very much in the digital realm uh, and, and would, would drive someone towards a conversion, I feel. For a small, medium business, like I want to say, you know, a business that's probably about a half a million dollar a year. What sort of marketing budget do you think they should put together? A healthy marketing budget? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, it depends on your margin. It depends on your goals too, right? If you're happy at the number you're at and you're able to to generate an, a good number of leads, it may be zero. Like, again, sorry to my bosses on that one. It may be zero, right? But if you're somebody who's in, in a growth uh, phase, if you're in a really competitive market, uh, if 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 you know, and this happens, especially the economy, you know, has certainly been through challenges where the predictability of certain things has has dried up a little bit. So it can it can be it can be preventative. Um, you know, our price ranges we're we're more again sort of the medium uh, to, to high end for local uh, would be like a starting point of, of around fifteen hundred. Like there's nothing under fifteen hundred that that we really offer. Mm-hmm. We certainly have clients who go up to the you know twenty, thirty, forty thousand range because they're on you know a, a wide number of services. So if that's a number that feels okay, and that's you know about twelve thousand, fifteen thousand a year uh, for for some people with their margins, and and what that just may not be uh, doable at all. There's no wrong answer with any of this. There's again that it has never been easier to do it yourself. It's there's never been more resources and tools available to you that are free or, or, or low of charge. And also, I think the expertise and support and consulting and guidance of you know an agency or, or whoever it might be have never been more valuable. Uh, so it's really just seeing where you are, what your goals are, and what what you're able to do. It's interesting because I've, I've worked myself with um, a lot of high tech, a lot of software organizations, and like they're normally looking at about a ten percent sort of spend when it comes to marketing with a 98% sort of quote shrink or yep. 98% retention rate, basically, which is, you know, if you look at it, it's about a 8% or so growth almost every year between the two. Yep. So it's very, very interesting that we say that. So if we were to give the clients or the folks that are watching a little piece of advice about digital marketing mm-hmm. for free, what would it be? That's good. That's good. Um, I'd say that the number one thing uh, is... It's accessible to you. Digital marketing is not and don't feel like it, it's it's retained by the experts or you have to get a degree in it. Or, you know, if I haven't been doing it since, you know, before Google came around, I, I couldn't yeah. get access to it. There are so many, whether it's YouTube educators, uh, certainly courses and, and just training materials online. Google actually has uh, there's something called the Google Digital Garage. It's a free training program. It's intense. It's, I think, towards 40 hours of work. But it's so educational about about small businesses, small business marketing, those kinds of things. So Google Digital I'd, Garage. Google Digital Garage, yeah. Look it up. There you go. Uh, so I was just saying, don't be intimidated. Don't feel like it's not for you or you can't get access because your budget's not there or you're not, you know, uh, maybe an entrenched business. And many of the most successful businesses, whether locally or, or even globally, again, they start as scrappy. They have no resources and they're yet able to overtake some of the dinosaurs who who maybe are arrogant or maybe make assumptions about their position. So yeah. don't yeah. be intimidated. You can do it. Yeah. And what's your thought on um, done is better than perfect? Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, I, th- I think it's really important, especially going back to the earlier conversation about the maintenance ideas. There is no done in digital marketing because the, the algorithms are evolving, user behavior is changing, and things get, get outdated. So yeah, get something up. Continue to, to modify it because that will be required. Even if you think it's perfect, it's, yeah. it's going to need to be not modified. As for my own habits and practices, I may have to work on that. <laughs> but no, I, I, it's, it's, it is critical in digital marketing because we're always optimizing, refining. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I see that quite often like because of my presence on Instagram and whatever. I get a lot of like other agents or sometimes other businesses that are like, man, you're just producing a lot of content. And a lot of the times when I watch my old content, I look at it and go, Ew. You know what I mean? But for me, it's, again, that whole sort of notion of it's done, it's out there, it's Mm -hmm. something. It's better than, you know, trying to get it perfect and then you just hold on, hold on, hold on, and nothing comes out. Yeah. There's an expression I use with my team, and I say, you should look back on the work you did a year ago, and you'll probably feel embarrassed. 
And it doesn't mean the work was objectively bad or it wasn't worthy at the time, but you have grown so much, your skills have grown so much that you wouldn't write the same thing or create the same video or whatever it is. And then you should be proud because you're like, look at the evolution. If you look back on something you did five years ago and you're like, that was the best I've ever done, you're probably not pushing yourself enough. You're probably not growing, right? And the same goes. Like, I look at some haircuts that I've had. (laughs) Who is this guy? (laughs) But that's the thing. Like, at the end of the day, we're in this sort of evolution every day. We're improving. And digital marketing is, is like, by far the most evolution there is. And it's every day it's new. Every day something else comes up and, you know, these change the algorithm. You got to, you know, come up with it. And, like, it's... Mm -hmm. So you're never going to be perfect, but you always got to be producing something every day and then kind of tying it back to the website, tying it back to uh, to your real estate that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, exactly. And going back to that question of, you know, because it's so in flux and always changing and, and yesterday's expertise is, is no longer relevant, if you're looking to break in or start marketing, that's the opportunity, yeah. right? Is that you're actually never that far behind the people who have been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years. And that's the thing. It's never too late. It's just like, when do you got to start? Yeah. You just got to start just something. jump in the pool. With SEO, it's always about, and correct me if I'm on the wrong path here, it's always about just starting. Absolutely. Because if you don't start, you know, today, six months from now, a year from now, well, you're starting there. Yeah. It's like trying to take a train from here, Toronto, and you never get on the train. You got to get on the train. Oh, you got to get on the train. At some point or other, if you get off the train, you may be halfway, three quarter of the way, and then maybe someone else can give you the lift for the, for exactly. the you know. Someone like yourself, SEO Plus, will give you that lift for the, the rest of the way. Kind of Happily thing. so, yes. <laughs> Perfect. I really, I know there's a lot more when it comes to digital marketing that we can discuss. You know, we didn't talk about paid ads. We didn't mm-hmm. talk about, you know, um, types of websites and things like that. But there's a lot more. And I encourage folks out there to reach out to you guys at SEO Plus and other services out there that are, you know, filling the city with fantastic businesses, helping a lot of businesses in the city. But for now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, I really thank you for being on our podcast, letting the folks know what SEO Plus is all about and invite the folks out there to just continue watching this podcast because we're always going to be talking about businesses, organizations, nonprofits around the city that are going to be bringing a ton of value to the city. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's really just a way for us to showcase all those businesses out there. So for folks that are watching, thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you so much for being on the show. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thank you for, for you know, being here and, and sharing some of the, the wisdom that you guys have. And again, thank you so much for uh, watching. And if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because there's a lot of episodes that are coming out and there's a lot of intense conversations with businesses around the city. So hit that bell icon so this way you can get a lot of you know alerts and things like that. And we are always in the know about businesses around the city. Thanks again. I'm your host, Patty Kudair with Sutton Group Ottawa. Thank you.